and welcome back to our channel. You are watching our developmental milestones series and we are going to be focusing on milestones for your nine month old and activities that you can do with your nine month old to help them achieve those milestones. If you are new here, we want to welcome you. So drop a comment down below so we can say hello. If you are returning, welcome back. We so hope that you are enjoying this developmental milestone series. As always, many of the products we'll be using in this video will be linked in the description below so that you can check them out. And then of course, if you like this video while you are watching, please hit like. And if you're not subscribed already and you want to see more of these videos or videos like it for your baby and toddler, please subscribe to our channel. We have such great content lined up for the rest of this year. So welcome again, let's get started. We're gonna jump into some gross motor milestones. So these are milestones that have anything to do with big muscle groups. So we're talking legs, we're talking arms, big movements. The first gross motor milestone we're gonna be working toward is that at this age, your child may start to pull themselves up to stand on furniture. We're gonna to work toward this milestone by putting some toys up on the couch and kind of encouraging your child to stand up to get to the toys. Let's put them up on the couch. Ooh, can you go get it? Go get it. Good job, Ainsley girl. What'd you get? You got a ball. Wow. Does that look like so much fun? The next gross motor milestone we're gonna be working toward is that at this age, your child may begin to crawl. We're gonna be working toward this milestone by setting up some obstacles and encouraging your child to crawl through them. Can I come crawling? Say hi. <laughs> Woo! Good crawling. Do you wanna go through this one? Oh, Ainsley girl. Hi. Was that so fun? Now we're gonna look at fine motor goals, which are goals that are related to the small muscle movements in your child's hands and fingers. And the first milestone that we are going to be focusing on is a modified pincer grasp. A true pincer grasp is where your baby uses the tip of their index finger and the tip of their thumb to grab things like in a pinch. A modified pincer grasp is where they're gonna use the pad of their index finger and the pad of their thumb to grab things. We are going to practice this milestone by doing an egg carton pickup. Use an empty egg carton and place one Cheerio in each of the egg cartons. Then model for your baby going in with that index finger and the thumb using that pincer grasp to pick up the Cheerio. If this skill is just developing for your baby, it might be a little bit of a challenge at first, but with more practice, she will get it. Do you wanna have some O's? Yeah, yeah come right up. Come look, girlfriend. Let's use our pinch. Pinch, pinch, pinch. Sure. Did you? Oh, you did get one. It fell down. Yeah. Did you get one? Mm. Are you coming back for more? <laughs> <laughs> more. More. Mm. more. Yeah, we're going to have more. <laughs> Now, if your baby is anything like Ainsley, they will figure out that they can easily get them out by flipping the egg carton. So make sure you hold on. Our next fine motor goal for your baby is that your baby is beginning to try to turn the pages in a board book. Most of the time, they will still be turning multiple pages at once. And the way that we're gonna practice this is by giving them opportunity and reading with them. Help your baby to turn the pages while reading the book. Especially with board books, if you just put pressure on the front and back cover, usually those pages will fan out just standing in the air and your baby will have lots of opportunity to reach forward and turn them. Do you want to pick out a book? You want to read this shark book? It's a book. Book. All right. You ready to read a book? Yeah. Yeah, let's start with this one. Never touch a shark. You must never touch a giant shark who's in a snappy mood. 
One trick that I love is actually putting my thumb right between one of the pages so it lifts it up so your baby can turn. A touch and feel book. A ball. I'm just copying you. <laughs> now we're going to move into some speech milestones. And this is anything having to do with how your child learns to speak, but also how they learn to receive and understand speech. The first speech milestone we're going to be working toward is that your child at this age should be developing a more sophisticated babbling. And they may start to include different sounds. We're going to be working toward this milestone by talking to our toys. We're going to grab some stuffed animals and we're going to be talking with our child to the stuffed animals. We're going to be encouraging lots of babbling and lots of different sounds. <laughs> next speech milestone we're going to work toward is that at this age your child may begin to understand yes and no. So we're going to grab some toys that your child definitely can play with, like stuffed animals, maybe cars, anything that is perfectly fine for them to play with. And we're going to grab some things that they're maybe not supposed to play with, like scissors or electronics. Can Ainsley play with a car? Yes! Ainsley can play with a car. What about this one? Can Ainsley play with the rattle? Yes! Yes! Look! These are scissors. Can Ainsley play with scissors? No! Ainsley can't play with scissors, huh? What about Dada's iPad? Can you play with Dada's iPad? No! We don't play with Dada's iPad, huh? Can we play with the car? Yes! Can you say, no? She knows that one pretty well. Now we are going to look at self-care milestones, or otherwise known as activities for daily living. They are activities that help your baby learn everyday skills. This month we are just gonna focus on one milestone, which is anticipating getting dressed. When you are getting your baby dressed in the morning, dress your baby slowly, pausing in places where your baby can anticipate the next motion. For example, put your baby's shirt over their head and pause. Your baby will likely begin to try to push her head through or pull the shirt down herself. You might even lift their arm up and begin to put their arm in the hole and see if they will anticipate pushing their arm the rest of the way through. Begin the motion and pause for anticipation. Over time, your baby will start to assist you more and more with that dressing process. You ready to get your shirt on? Okay, head first, here we go. Yay! Whoop, boop, 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 boop. And I'm in. Wow, good one, sis. Where's your other arm? Next, we're going to jump into some cognitive milestones. This is any milestone that has to do with how your child thinks or how they perceive their world. The first milestone we're going to be working toward is playing peekaboo. We're really working toward a skill called object permanence. And that is the idea that when your child loses sight of something, that it continues to exist. It's really interesting, but babies, actually, if you cover up a toy with a blanket, to them, that toy doesn't exist anymore. We're trying to build this idea that it still does exist by playing peekaboo with your child. Where's Dada? Oh, peekaboo! Where's Dada? Peekaboo! Okay. Where's Ainsley? Oh, peek! Oh, peekaboo! Peekaboo! Peek. Peek. 
next cognitive milestone that we're going to be working toward is also related to object permanence, and that is that when your child drops a toy, they may look for it. So, we're going to be sitting in a high chair, we're going to play with some toys, we're going to drop it, and we're going to encourage your child to look for that toy. Look! Here's one too! Where'd it go? The toy fell down! That's right! Good job! Look, it's a toy! Where did they go? Did it fall down? Yeah, it fell down. It's on the floor. Now we are going to move on to social and emotional goals, which are goals related to the way that your baby understands her own emotions as well as social interactions with others. The first milestone that we are going to look at is a more advanced sense of imitation, which is not just restricted to sounds and words, but expands into facial expressions and gestures as well. We are going to practice this by playing with baby in the mirror, making silly faces or hand gestures, let your baby observe what you're doing and see if they will mimic you as well. Hi. Hi. You say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you got it. High five. Yeah. typical behavior for your nine month old is that your baby is more clingy to familiar adults. And the way that your baby will overcome that is by social exposure. Simply introduce your baby to other people. Set her down on the floor where you and other adults are talking so she can see that she is safe not being in your arms, but also in the presence of other adults. Now while we wish we could have demonstrated this one for you, because of the circumstances of COVID-19, we are not in the company of many other adults these days. So this one you might have to use a little bit of imagination for. Thank you so much for watching our video today. We're going to take some time to talk about what your pediatrician may be looking for in your nine month visit. Your child's nine month checkup with your pediatrician will involve some developmental screening. Your pediatrician is going to take a look at your child and ask you a bunch of questions about how they're developing to make sure that they're developing normally. Your pediatrician is also on the lookout for things that may be red flags showing that they're not developing properly. Some of the red flags to be aware of are if your child doesn't bear weight on their legs with support, if they are not sitting up on their own, if they're not babbling, if they can't transfer a toy from one hand to another, if they don't respond to their own name, if they don't seem to recognize familiar people, or if they don't look at where you point. All of those things may point to some level of a developmental delay and may warrant further testing. That doesn't mean that there's something wrong with your child. It may just mean that they need a little bit of extra help and a little bit of extra time to focus on some of those skills. Kaylee and I are huge supporters of early intervention. You may have seen in one of our earlier vlogs that our daughter Ainsley actually had some developmental delays in several areas, in cognitive and in gross motor, fine motor. So she had some pretty significant delays, but we ended up working with the physical therapist, and so far we have seen fantastic growth. If you have any concerns whatsoever about your child's development, to please talk to your pediatrician. Thank you again for watching this video with us. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope these activities were super helpful for you and your kiddos. Be sure to check out the other videos in this series. Also, if you wanna see more videos in the future, be sure to subscribe to our channel, hit that like button, and make sure you hit that bell so you can get a notification every time we post a new video. Thank you again so much for watching this video all the way to the end. We'll see you next time. Until then, bye.